Uh, Sway in the morning, Shade 4 5. I had my friend on here a long time ago and talked about his importance in, um, in, in the history of the music industry, his family, his legacy, the Rifkin family, um, but also um, the role he played in, um, uh, in hip-hop and hip-hop culture becoming a mainstay, becoming mainstream. He was one of the original architects that uh, showed us how to promote um, and market and brand the music, um, and he had a kind of tutelage that we all didn't have initially, but he, he was immersed in the same culture on the same streets. Um, you know, he had some insight that um, he helped take that insight and apply it to what it is we do uh, culturally, in a culturally significant way. And, and for that, the way we met, as I tell this story all the time, as his company uh, promoted um, my, my project, me and King Tech's project early on before we came to radio, uh, we were swaying tech and we put out music and uh, Steve Rifkin uh, was helping to promote our our, our singles to radio and, and to uh, our videos as well. He worked on our behalf. We contracted him to help launch our careers as artists. Even though we had started there, we went to him to um, help take it to the next level. By that time, we had started getting into radio as well. And so the, uh, the relationship uh, just became like a brotherhood. And when he started Loud Records in 1993, 92. 92, um, by that time we were already on the radio and a lot of the artists that he was playing was indicative to his dedication to this culture. When I named these artists that uh, that came out on Loud Records, I was intro introduced to the world in many ways through Loud Records. You'll understand what his brand has meant to hip hop, um, defining this culture over the decades. We're talking the likes of, when I do this, give me some applause, M.O.P., <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Crazy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. That was a big deal because he signed his own deal. 3-6 Mafia. Um, Project Pat, wow. uh, Mr. Twister, before it was just Twister, uh, Pete Rock, The Alcoholics, Exhibit, uh, Jizza, Inspector Deck, Raekwon, uh, Big Pun, Fat Joe, Mob Deep. Wow. Did I say Dead Press? Nope. Nope. Dead Press, Wu-Tang Clan. I'm not even naming all of them, ladies and gentlemen, but he's here to celebrate his 25th anniversary, which is taking place tomorrow at Radio City Music Hall at 8 p.m. And guess what? All of these acts are on the bill. Wow. We got the one and only Steve Rifkin, Woo! founder of Loud Records, with us here today. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Give him them flowers. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> You know how much fun I have doing that? <laughs> Come on. I was there. It was not easy. It wasn't. It wasn't easy. It wasn't. You um, know. Remember the office? Yes, I remember <laughs> the office. It was an office that had cubicles. I didn't know what a cubicle was at that time, and y'all did four different things in one office at one point, right? Yeah. And the vision was, what was your initial motivation to start Loud Records? What was the vision? I didn't want to start Loud Records. Okay. I was cool just having the marketing company. Uh -huh. um, and then one day a lawyer reached out to me. He says, BMG wants to give you a label. I was like, nah, I'm cool. Not knowing this lawyer was my dad's lawyer. So um, I was in New York for a wedding, and my dad calls me to Long Island. I was like, oh, shit, what the hell did I just do now that he's calling me in? And he explained to me, he goes, I heard uh, BMG just offered you um, a label deal. I'm like, yeah, and I passed, you know, and, we had some words, and then he explained to me the difference between the asset business and the service business, right? So um, when he explained it that way, I agreed. I was like, all right, I'm going to start this label. And that's, how, that's how it started. Because as a marketing company, you were in the service business. You were doing a service. Exactly. We were only as good as our last contract. Yeah. You did a service for us when we were signed to Giant Warner Brothers, right? Exactly. Um, 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 and, so, and so here we are. I find that very uh, um, interesting, and I, I find you uh, uh, very fortunate to have somebody like your father, Julian Rifkin, to be able to pass this information down. That's the kind of stuff we have these conversations about generational wealth now. Uh, that's an example of how it happens, mm -hmm. nepotism as well. Nepotism isn't a bad thing to me. If your family member has worked to get into a position and they want to open doors or, or co-sign doors, 
uh, for uh, the, the the children. Why not? Why, especially if they know how to do the work. Now we see this passing forward. You have your son here. I got my son Alex to my left, right to uh-huh. second. He has his own label through Atlanta called Chosen. Uh huh. Has a few artists and um, and again, he did it himself. He didn't use me to open up a door. Uh-huh. Nothing like that. Um, he, he did it on his own. Is Alex? Is your last name Rifkin? It is. Okay, he didn't have to say. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Your last name is Rifkin. You know it. It definitely helps to get to the door. Um, but how are you, man? I've known this dude since he was before he had colored hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? How old are you now? If you don't mind me asking. Twenty four. You're twenty four. Shit. How are you twenty four? I'm just twenty six. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. <laughs> uh, so you grew up around all of this stuff, right? Yeah, most definitely. You, you, what are some of your earliest memories about hanging out where the Wu Tang Clan was and that sort of thing? I wasn't even. Born, yeah, born when Wu-Tang was signed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. My memories was from the SRC days. Okay. So I had a lot of Akon memories. Akon. Like okay. my first video shoot, going to my first video shoot uh, for, what was it, Belly Dancer? Or Banana? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Akon Belly Dancer. And then, um, then you in the lonely I was video. in the Lonely video. I was in the Don't Matter video. So that's when I really got my first taste of just being around the industry and just seeing how it works. Uh huh. Um, being in the office with him. Being in the office. Yeah. What did you learn? Like, what what kind of tricks did you, or the trades you pick up in terms? Because a lot of people think it's as easy. I got a record deal. I got a label deal. That really don't mean shit if you're not doing nothing with it. What did you learn? Just how to work. Mm-hmm. You learn patience. You learn that this music shit isn't an over. It seems overnight because some like it comes out of nowhere when it pops off, but. It's really a steady grind from the jump. You got to mm-hmm. develop. You got to make, grow the brand, grow the Instagram, get the records right. It's just a steady grind. You got to be mentally strong enough to persevere when you find a hardship, mm-hmm. you know? So that's really what I learned. What kind of artists are you signing? Stars. Yeah? Yeah. Who, who have you signed so far? So one pop act, his name is Justice Carradine, 20 years old from Utah. Mm-hmm. And then a hip-hop act uh, named Katil, 21 from Seattle. He's actually performing... On the show on Thursday. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate bring him it. up here. You say rap, bring him up here. We'll let you know if he can rap. <laughs> he's a star. Yeah. You know, your dad did that. All these artists I'm naming from the Alcoholics, Dead Press, Mob Deep. We we lived in an amazing time. And all those artists came up to the Wake Up Show. And it was almost like you had to kind of, that was the stumping ground. That was the proving grounds, you know. I mean, that was our Friday night hang. Yeah. Like people just, right? I mean that was that was amazing, you know. But getting back to him, he took his work ethic. He was a ball player. Uh-huh. You know, he played college ball, so he was, you know, he was disciplined from the get go. Like up until high school, it was just like in the gym, working, working, working. College, same thing. And then I was it like your sophomore year, then sophomore, it, junior year. Like yeah. he, he's like, fuck basketball, and um, I want to do music. And, and he was able to. Did you quit college? Uh. <laughs> Damn! Did you use basketball? You use that? You just didn't want to go to school, dog. Is that- um, <laughs> what's up, mom? Uh, <laughs> uh, no. So when I stopped hooping, I stayed in school for two more years, and then because I redshirted, so I was gonna be a fifth-year senior. Uh huh. So my fifth year is when I got the label deal. So I'm like, okay, I can either finish or I could really just put my energy towards an amazing opportunity that I got at a young age. Uh huh. Because I feel like I can always go back. Um, so I just took advantage of the opportunity. That's what you told your mom. I go always go back. (laughs) I I don't think his mom knows. (laughs) I go. She don't even know this is it. (laughs) She'll know now. (laughs) She'll know now. Well, Uh, she's in Paris, so I don't. I don't know if you guys get this in Paris. Yeah, we get to Paris, man. That's all. (laughs) You know, with that wonderful thing called the internet, everybody get to see it around the world. Shit goes viral. Um, let me ask you this. Um, when did the the three sixty deal? When did that really first start coming into play? I want to say um, early 2000s. Early 2000s. But to me, I was never a fan of it. Why not? Because the labels don't do shit for it, Mm -hmm. right? So it's like, if you're an artist, why should, you know, granted, they're spending money on marketing and everything else like that, but if they're just grabbing a piece of something and they're not doing anything for it, why should they get a piece? Mm -hmm. Now, if they're going to help and bring things to the table... Of course, if there's a branding deal, and they get, they should get it. But why, if the manager gets a branding deal for whatever, uh-huh. you know, why should the label see a piece of that? 
So why was it created, do you think? Because the majors are fucking greedy motherfuckers. Okay. That's it, huh? The la- the the majors are greedy mother mother how you put it. Um <laughs> <laughs> If knowing that it is it compliant to go along with it and not speak about speak out about it was like other CEOs like against it. I hated the uh, concept of the three sixty deal of a label getting a piece, a percentage of everything that you make. No, exactly. Yeah. So I mean I don't I couldn't worry about what the other labels and the other CEOs were thinking. Uh-huh. It's like you know, we always danced to our own beat. Like, you know, we sold what, two hundred million records without any radio play. Who uh-huh. did that? Uh huh. Two hundred million without any radio play. Wow. Yeah, and that. So, what kind of deals are you offering, folks, Alex? Um. So, being transparent, three sixties. They're three sixties. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. But just to be clear, it's not like. <laughs> but just to be clear, it's not like we're coming in here taking half your shit. Like, yeah. we're we're flexible with the terms. Okay. Um, but I will say, my label, we do develop. We do come in from the jump. And we do everything necessary. We do invest in whatever you need, marketing, getting in front of so and so, whoever. So we're there every All step right, of the but way. But that's cool. But does Atlantic deserve a piece of that? There are partners. We're, but that's the <laughs> point. So so Atlantic gets a piece of your piece, or does Atlantic we just split fifty fifty with Atlantic? Okay, cool. I don't want to get to the detailed terms of it, man. <laughs> and then how much um, budgeting money? Now just with you, man. All right, <laughs> the DB. Being that that this is now like a family business, you know what I mean? And I was just wondering about how when like when your father was doing business there was a certain sort of way of doing business back then that kind of changed from when you started uh, running the label and now that he's running the label you know what i mean from like sort of handshakes and like keep your words sort of era to okay now we need contracts and now it's sort of like we don't need labels if we want to do it independent you know what i mean from from those eras and things like that so what was the one thing that sort of stayed constant from your father to you and now to him i mean well actually my grandfather Uh you know i never really worked on a contract I mean, it, to me, it's always been about a handshake. I mean, that's it. If you don't have your word, I mean, what is the contract going to do? Hmm. So that's really how I am. Um, because he's at Atlantic, I'm sure they have contracts. I mean, I had contracts too, but it was like once we shook hands, I was good. So you never had any, like, the Wu-Tang Clan or Exhibit or Mob Deep, you never really had issues with royalty payments and that sort of thing? No, I mean, I, I'm, sure, I'm. I don't know if you remember this story. I mean, I got arrested uh-huh. for sticking up for Wu Tang in a renegotiation. I was like, give them the fucking money that they deserve, uh-huh. and I threw a chair through a window. <coughs> and shit. That's right. That's right. So, um, I mean, that's. I mean, we're lucky to be in a business where it's something that we love. Music is, I've always said, the closest thing to God. Right. So, if these artists are making <coughs> amazing music. And we're all selling a shit. In those days, we were selling a shitload of records. Uh-huh. They should have everything that they asked for. Like, why? I mean, why are we fucking with them for twenty thousand dollars? Yeah. Steve Rifkin is here, by the way. This is a celebration, ladies and gentlemen. Loud Records, twenty fifth anniversary. Tomorrow there's a concert at Radio City Music Hall. Starts at eight p.m. Who wants to see the Wu Tang Clan? The entire Wu Tang Clan is going to be there. Correct. Correct. Big pun tribute and featuring Fat Joe, Mob Deep, and other special guests, right? The Alcoholics. We talking Pete Rock. Crazy Bone is coming? Nah. He's not. 3-6 Mafia is there? Yes. Okay. Twister is there? Not yet. Not yet. Might be. Who knows? Uh, Raekwon will be there. Is Akon coming? Akon's SRC. I know, but still. No? no? All right. Cool. Uh, But so it's just a lot of big acts in one place. A uh, huge celebration. Are tickets still available? Tickets are still available. Okay, so how do people get tickets? Is that Radio City Music Hall? How do we get tickets? Just go online, Ticketmaster, go to Radio City Music Hall on tickets.com um, and look there and Google it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, you have the internet for a reason. Word. Um, I've often wondered in seeing so many different artists be very open about um, the decline in their mental health and dealing with fame at much earlier, earlier ages because the internet can be a DIY type of situation. Have you guys thought about if maybe labels right now should think about leaving room in a budget for a mental health department, just being very proactive in that artist's side of life? 
I really do think so. What's the show? Billions. Yeah. Right. Where there's oh. a where there's a woman. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm saying it for mental health, but it's for somebody that um, she deals with all the, all their issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So it's but it's not even the artists. It's it's the executives. You know, it's like nobody tells you as a kid. A college can't tell you this. Right. On November fourth, nineteen ninety six, I had ten dollars to my name. Say a growing company. On November sixth. 1996. I had 10 million dollars in my name. Nobody tells you, mm-hmm. like, yeah. What are you gonna do now? Yeah, right. So I, I wish I had somebody in my office mm-hmm. to just guide me through these things. Right. You said on November 4th you had <laughs> 10 dollars, and by November 6th yeah. you had 10 million. The yeah. fuck that's you real. do, man? That, that, that ain't even <laughs> without what scamming. You, what you do, man? Was it like a? Uh, I mean, I sold a piece of the company. That was when, when you have an asset. That's when you have an asset. Going back to what Jules told you. Yep. Shit, get game, ladies and gentlemen. Get game. Um, I'm gonna open up these phone lines. I'm gonna play a, a loud record classic right now. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. It's a celebration. Plus, you get this information for free. Sway in the morning, shade four five. Ladies and gentlemen, we like. You know what I mean, sway in the morning, man. They will all be there tomorrow night, Thursday, eight p.m. Radio City Music Hall, Wu-Tang Clan will be there in full force. Fat Joe will be there, Mob Deep, special guests. There'll be a big pun tribute. You know, uh, I'm sure there'll be a, a tribute to Prodigy as well. And a tribute to ODB. ODB um, as well. Exhibit is already in town. Pete Rock is already in town. The Alcoholics are already in town. MOP already in town. Wood, Dead Prez already in town. Uh, this is going to be a, a, a night to remember. Tickets are still available. Only a few are left at Radio City Music Hall, so make sure uh, you pick them up. Steve and Alex Rifkin are here. Uh, S&E, what up? You in New York? Yo. Yeah, New York, upstate New York. Okay. What's up, Sway? What up, family? How you doing, bro? Chilling, chilling, you know, hyena style. Okay, I hear you. I hyena hear you. Style. You know what I mean? We got hyenas calling ah. in. They know how to use the phone. No doubt. Okay. Uh, no doubt. You got a question for uh, Steve or Alex? Yeah, I do have a question for Mr. Riskin. Let me start off by saying you're a professional star to me as far as, you know, saying paperwork and all that. So I'm I'm, I'm happy to be on the phone. It's a blessing. First question is, is uh, how do you feel about starting, like how Prince had his uh, studio lot, like Paisley Park and stuff like that? How do you feel about that, uh, uh, starting that kind of, uh, um, how I say, brick and mortar for hip hop? Because, you know, when we come to the films, we got to go to Warner, we got to go here, we got to go there, but we don't have any place where we come for ourselves like Tyler Perry has. I mean, I know uh, Queen Lativa has fav- Flavor Unit and everything, but they have to go through channels in order for them to do something. You understand? If I'm making any sense. Mm-hmm. Like building a compound, I think is what he means. Like, like Yeah, a- so, yeah. I mean, my philosophy was always build brick by brick. So, you know, I had two companies, I had the Stephen Rifkin company, which was the marketing company, and then that you know, and then the sister company was was loud. So I've always just believed in just building something, you know, brick by brick. Because if you don't have a foundation, the first storm that hits, you're out of business. Well, he, so he's asking, would you be interested in doing that, creating that kind of dojo, that kind of community, that space? You Again? know, yeah, for yeah, that's one hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, he he said yes, S and E. Uh, so send your audition tapes to uh, <laughs> Steve Rifkin online. Uh, Mike is in Baltimore. Good morning, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, good morning, Sway. Good morning, crew. Good morning, bro. What up? Hey, Steve, man. I just want to say congratulations, man. I met you years ago. You was having a party in D.C. for Davina, oh, and wow. uh, my man Jam Master J had introduced me to you. Oh wow, that's right. I hadn't I hadn't really knew your story until I read about you in the Big Business by Dan Charnas, man. You got some shit behind you, and you come a long way. I just want to say thank you for everything you've done for the culture. All right, man. I appreciate it. That's how he summed it up. You got some shit behind you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Good to you. I'm surprised to see you here today. Do you have, um, for you, Steve Rifkin, what what, what do you, um, uh, in, in the new millennial, uh, what's, been, what's been keeping you excited? I just started this new company. Mm-hmm. So it's um, it's a management company. And um, I'm going to manage. I'm going to put out some records and mm-hmm. just 
like I said, I'm building something again, brick by brick. Brick by brick. Yeah. What about you, Alex? I see a big future for you, bro. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so Justice, the pop hack, he has a couple more singles we're going to release and drop an EP, like a three, four song EP. Katil, we have like 25 to 30 records we're very, very confident in. So we're going to release four EPs within the next year. Um, and then for management, me and my partner, we have a girl from Atlanta named Omreta the Great. So we're finishing her album right now. Um, and so that all that has me really excited for this next 12 months. And then I'm signing my son, my other son. <laughs> oh, that's right. You got another son. Yeah. yeah what does he do? Um, he just started rapping. And so you go, well, don't sign him, man. Shit. No, make I him mean, earn it. <laughs> <laughs> Is he good? Um, don't sign him, man. Make nah, him he's, uh, <laughs> I never heard him rap before. <laughs> I never heard him rap before until this, uh, to the song he sent me and my dad. I'm like, Ryan? Okay, what's up? Let's, let's man, figure something out. Did you sign him yet? No, not yet. Don't do that, man. <laughs> Let him earn it, man. Let him choose nah, some this, bricks. This motherfucker needs to learn how to work. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you just going to give him a job? Nepotism lives. You see Listen, what I mean? sometimes dad is the hardest boss. So yeah, well, that's shit. really what it is. That's a, on th by theory, he ain't gonna fire him. <laughs> <laughs> it could be I mean, worse. That's, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. I mean, he's gonna be an artist, so he's not gonna be an employee. But he, you know, he's gonna be up working and promoting and just like. Well, that's a beautiful thing. How do you with a with the history of your family and your dad just kind of talking about his finances and how successful he has been? What's that called? Affluenza? Is that what's yeah. that? Affluenza. How do you? Um, it sounds like a flu. No, well, it's just when you live a priv in a privileged environment and it's almost like you shelter from the real world, you, because of it, expect certain things, right? And certain um, privileges that come along with it. And I would admire, I, you know, and you exempt to a lot of other things that, uh, that normal people have to deal with, you know. Uh, but you're really grounded. I can see how it could be, get really lost in the success of a parent. How, how did you stay grounded? Um, but you you know what I'm saying. I'm sure no, you grew no. up around friends. Who no, I totally, I totally yeah. get it. When yeah. I was playing ball growing up, I played my basketball. My AU team was in the hood. Mm -hmm. So I was able to be around kids in less fortunate situations. Mm -hmm. So it just gave me a different lens in life that, because I went to school with a bunch of rich kids. Yeah. Total opposites. So I was able to see both. And it gave me a sense of gratitude mm -hmm. for my life because I realized the life we live wasn't normal. Yeah. Flying private jets at six years old isn't normal. <laughs> no, at six, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Your first private jet ride was at right. six. <laughs> that's dope. Yeah, so right. it's like I realized growing up that's not normal. So yeah. just I just gave I just give a lot of gratitude for everything I have. Um, and that keeps me grounded. And then that's basically it. Man, good to see you as an adult, bro. Thank you. Man, you all right. Uh, man, Steve, man, as you know, man, I love you. Love you all too, right. sir. Let's keep working, baby. We've been in it a yeah. long time, man. Steve Rifkin, ladies and gentlemen, Loud Records, 25th anniversary tomorrow at Radio City Music Hall, 8 p.m. Go online and get your tickets. Alex Rifkin, good to meet you, bro. Yes, sir. You all too. Right.